History is filled with references to oil, the fossil fuel we most rely on today here on Earth. Its fiery element would change the course of continents and seas, would send awesome currents of pure energy charging through the atmosphere. Working with other elements, the sun would first stir life on our planet. Gradual shiftings and upheavals would bury creatures and plants beneath the surface of the earth. There, subjected to time and tremendous pressures, they would fossilize, eventually turning into huge reservoirs of oil and gas and coal. Billions of years would pass. Then, from these underground beds of fossil fuels, man would draw the means for duplicating, in his small way, the power generated by the sun. At first, energy was used for heat and light. Its uses multiplied slowly, then faster and faster, until finally the fuse was lit for a virtual energy explosion that would affect all aspects of our lives. The story of how oil is brought up from far down in the earth is exciting. The products of oil or petroleum are necessary for us to live the way we do today. We need gasoline to run our automobiles and airplanes, fuel oil to run our modern trains, kerosene to heat our houses, and of course we need the oils that keep our powerful machines running. In 1859, Edward Drake drilled this country's first producing oil well near Titusville, Pennsylvania. The coming of oil triggered a rush to likely looking spots as prospectors set out to claim quick and easy riches. Spindletop in East Texas. The Seminole Fields of Oklahoma. Edison's invention of the light bulb would lead to a world electrified and increase the need for coal and oil and natural gas to generate electric power. The gasoline engine demanded fuel to run our cars. Energy was something to use and use and use. As the pace of life quickened, we were into the 20th century. Now there were cars, trains, airplanes, appliances galore. The automobile and the power behind it have been major factors in the growth of our country. We can drive anywhere we want to, at any time, for any reason, including fun. Altogether, we drive our cars a billion miles a day. It seems no other people in the world want so much just to get going when they have little time. Maybe it's just that no other people can get going so easily. What it comes down to is that the oil industry has to please Mrs. Martin and millions just like her. Already today, she's used some 87 petroleum products, including the plastic bacon wrapper and the wax of the milk cotton. She'll top 100 before the day is over. The pump does not know when midnight comes. Days are the same to it. It pumps from Tuesday into Wednesday without a halt. Each day, every day, it brings us another 24 hours of progress. Building our nation, guarding its security, assuring the future of America. The situation of oil running out, you know, peak oil, that's it. That's it. That's never happened before. The very engine of civilization. The concept of peak oil is that basically we're right about there at, at the globe. You know, coincided their discovery in the use of oil and the industrialization of the oil, oil economy, coincided with this tremendous population burst. And it's all going to, it's all coming to a grinding halt. Our industrial progress and economic growth was fired by what many seem to look on as endless energy. But warning signs were there. The price of oil is just going to keep on rising and rising and rising. There's no way we're going to get out of this pattern. 
because the demand is increasing and the supply is reaching a maximum. Well, this decline is happening all over the world. And when the demand grows greater than the immediate supply, the circuits break. Attention all passengers, flight 307 is canceled until further notice. We're not discovering as much as we're using how much longer do we have to go. So whether it's 20 years or whether it's 40 years or whether it's 50 years, it doesn't matter. The end game is coming. Until 1950, the United States could supply the energy needed. But in less than 25 years, we found ourselves in trouble. Each year, we used 5% more, doubling our demand every 12 to 14 years. When the oil here is all gone, these wells will be dry, worthless. And that's going to cause major problems, perhaps you know, major wars, who knows what. But it's like a, so many people don't even see it. Means. I mean, I never thought they would ever come to this. I mean, I, I feel like I'm in a science fiction movie, a bad science fiction movie, right? Suppose it could be an omen. Or maybe she's helping us. It was announced today that gasless Sundays will go into effect as of next month. And when several circuits break at the same time, we have an energy crisis. We're in an energy crisis now, and will be for some time to come. All we can do is face it, recognize it, and meet the challenges it poses. As we cannot produce as much as we can use, as we are equipped to use in our homes and our factories, this situation is destined to continue indefinitely. And by indefinitely, I mean not only just the next few years, but as far ahead as we can see. So great is our demand that we're looking for new energy in places once considered sacrosanct. We're tapping huge reserves within the Arctic Circle on the north slope of Alaska. Up until today, you believed there was a line between myth and reality. Even a very fine line sometimes, but at least there was a line. Those things out there... Can the car make it? I'm sure. We must change if we're going to have the energy we need. If we want new oil, we've got to look in new places. We must demand more efficient engines for our cars. We must push forward at whatever cost, at whatever cost. development of new energy resources. We must make personal commitments to cut down wherever we can on the energy we use. Only this can keep the total energy circuit from breaking, disastrously, for all of us. I think it's going to end with everybody changing their, their habits. Just start working now, otherwise we won't have time. We're going to be out of oil within a few years. Well, just looking at my bills, I'm getting upset. It's paying more for electricity every month. And the gasoline is going up. And I'm used to being able to go when I want to, when I want to. But suddenly, I think I'm going to have to start curbing my habits. My family and I have uh, tended to conserve energy, uh, both in the limited in the use of our cars. People say, well, it's not going to run out in our time. We have to think of our kids and our kids' kids and how they're going to have to put up with a whole lot of stuff uh, just because we're not careful. What I've seen the people, most of them are pretty selfish. It's all right to let somebody else do it, but when it comes right down to home, why, they, they just want to go along the same old way. And when you look at it, it, uh, it, you wonder why you didn't do this before, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be carried forward in the future and, and new and better ways to conserve energy will be uh, thought of. The energy is here, within this universe, on this planet. It's a challenge facing each of us in all lands to explore, to find, to develop, and to use wisely 
not wastefully, the energy that's here. If we meet this challenge, it will be for the good of all mankind on Earth. To what new horizons can we look now? Where are tomorrow's opportunities? What's ahead in America for you, for your children? In a silver shroud Streams coming back around 